Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, big question I have for you, for our viewers, for our listeners. Do you ever feel like you look back at the end of your day and uh, you try to figure out, what did I get done today, right? What, what happened? Um, did I get accomplished what I needed to get accomplished? Do you ever think that you really don't have enough time to get accomplished what you need to do in the daytime? Well, you know, don't worry. You're not alone. Everybody goes through this and we all ask ourselves, where did our time go? What did I get done? You know, man, I would say things like, man, I wish I had more time or man, I wish I was more organized. Well, so the good news is me and the Reboot crew here, we're going to talk to you today about productivity hacks that are going to help you in business and in life in general um, become more organized um, without a whole lot of extra work, right? Little tips and things like that. And so before I get to that, <laughs> before I get to that, let me tell you, uh, thanks first by for joining the Reboot. And if you're watching live or if you're listening, we really appreciate you coming. Um, we're here to help business owners and managers evaluate uh, business technologies, decisions, and situations that they need to make their businesses more successful. And so uh, uh, I'm Jim Gast, and I'm with SpliceNet Consulting here in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I'm joined by these guys. Brian Bradshaw, b and PC Solutions on Long Island in New York. LD, David Luft with LDD Consulting in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Brandon Bowers with uh, Zentech Data Systems, South Florida. Ryan Heisler, Computeries in beautiful St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> no doubt about that, Ryan. No doubt about that. These guys are experts at, at business and, and, and getting things done in business. I've known them for a long time, and they're highly efficient. We, we also, guys, tell me, don't we all kind of somewhat train all the time on how to become more efficient regularly, quarterly, and so on and so forth at least? Yes. And and it has been one of the best things that's ever happened to me in business is that that training and so on and so forth. So I'm going to start off with one of my favorite productivity hacks, if that's OK, guys. All right. Yes, for everybody? Do it. All right. So one of the things I have a problem with is I know I've got to get something done. OK, I just know whether it's a quote, whether it's, you know, look for some information and put together a report for somebody. But. Every day, things get in the way. I mean, things creep up. Hey, you got to do this. You got to do that. Uh, you know, maybe you got to do billing. Maybe you got to do some accounting. Maybe you do some collections or workers comp or HR or whatever, right? But you know what? Those things that, that you have to get done, like sales quotes, right? I mean, nothing happens until something's sold. So that's essential. So my hack, and maybe other people do this, but if you don't think about it like this, I know that I owe something to a customer and they're dependent upon me to set the date to present it to them. So I'll set that date like a week out or whatever that date needs to be without having that stuff done. A lot of people think I can't set the date before, until I get it done. No, I set it even without it being done because I can guarantee you if I am being held accountable by the customer that I need to work with, I'm going to get it done. It's going to get done. It, it might get done the day before. But it will get done, you know, I promise you that and it'll be excellent. So that's my productivity. Act. I want to add to that. Yeah, I, for me, always scheduling a next step, no matter what it is, whether mm -hmm. I, number one, I feel like you always hear this when it comes to sales. So you're going into a sales meeting, never leave before you schedule the next step. But it goes towards everything else, too. So I do a meeting with a customer, just like you said, whatever I need to do next to get it out. I get it scheduled right then or I schedule our next meeting. And it keeps me accountable. Just like you said, you know, that ticking time bomb is coming up that I got to get this thing done before this meeting comes up. And then you're now kind of liable to get it done. Or what are you going to tell them? Or you, you got to reschedule. You don't want to do that. Embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That, that, that is, that's one of the things that can, can make sure that I get things done on time is if I put it on the calendar. Guarantee it. Hold yourself accountable to someone else. Right. And otherwise it just gets pushed to the, it just keeps getting pushed to the back and the back mm -hmm. and the back and the back. Yep. Mm -hmm. Everything gets in the way. Yep. Brian, what do you done. got for it? You got a hack? Um, yeah, I have one. Uh, again, nothing new by any stretch of the imagination. Just um, utilizing and, and making sure that you have uh, some rules set up in Outlook. Um, you know, I find myself now that my, uh, my my son's looking to colleges, you know, I'm getting 20 emails a day from colleges. And I literally find had found myself at one point these emails come in, you go down that rabbit hole, you click, you go here, then, then I'm spending a half hour looking. I'm like, wait, now they just go dumped into a folder. When I get home at night, I, I go there, I look, and I do that with, with other non-business related stuff. 
I want to see that stuff. I just don't need it occupying time during my day. I want to be a little more productive. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really helped me out. Um, another one is, is check with uh, your, your phone provider, especially if you have a VoIP system. See if they have an app that you can use and really extend that, that office presence. Um, we're with uh, Citricom, so we can all enter our, our business lines, make calls out of the business right from the cell phone, message each other through there, um, go through your call history, all that stuff um, right, right through the app. So you don't even need a desktop phone. You can do it from a laptop, from the app. Um, and that cuts down on, on relying on being somewhere to, to, you know, receive a phone call or something like that. So those okay. are two, two, two that we, we use. Can we go back to Brian's first one for a second, which I, I consider that like the umbrella of inbox management, right? So keeping your inbox clean of clutter. And I know a lot of people historically have just disabled this feature, but using the focused inbox, for me, I, I was always one, I would always disable it. Whenever I would help set up a customer, we would just globally disable it because I didn't feel like it was ready for prime time. But now, I mean, I I live by the focus inbox because I feel like the most important items are always forefront. And occasionally, like you said, Brian, hey, at the end of the day or you know, maybe twice a day, I'll check the unfocused right. items and see if there's any junk in there or whatever else needs to be done. And then I even try to take it one step further is, just because everybody usually keeps all those items in their inbox and you're constantly working to like clean your inbox and it's never right. gonna happen unless yeah. you just start getting it out of there. So unless, if something needs to be done, what my rule is, and I think it was in a session that we all were in a training on at one point, but uh, Bruce McCulley, he recommended this to everybody. I'll, I'll name drop for everybody. They can look, look him up, <laughs> good PR for him. Um, but he recommended you know, to keep it clean. Hey, if it's something you need to do later on, mark it as a to do. So you just hit the little flag button and then archive it and get rid of it. And then it's out of your face. You're no longer seeing it. You can always go back to your to do list. Right. But if it's something that needs to be done with and it can be done within a minute or so, just knock it out right then and get it out of your hair. So it's not one of those items that's kind of like just nagging at you. Definitely. So. Yep. Agree. Yeah, no doubt about that. So, Dave, what do you got for us? Uh, for me, it's just setting up the goals each day. Just try and pick the what's the most important thing that I have to get done and not fill your whole day up with those goals because you got to have some margin in there to handle the crisis that come up. You know, there's always going to be stuff in our business where you can't plan for it and you just have to leave some room in your schedule for that stuff. I think I like the one we talked about off air earlier when you said um, how you make everyone around you feel so they don't come by. <laughs> what was I calling? So if you make everybody around you hate you, then they quit bothering you and you can get a lot more work done. <laughs> they might quit. That would be great. Then you just don't have that. They don't have to bother with you. That was funny, though. No, and, and, and you're right. So. Uh, do you guys, do you guys in your businesses, do you guys have morning huddles with your teams or do your teams have morning huddles? Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah. Yep. yeah. We have a huddle every morning and, um, we, we actually went down to what are our two biggest, uh, priorities for the day. Right. And then maybe what's a roadblock that's keeping you from accomplish thing, accomplishing them. Uh, th that has really helped because, uh, for me, I'll write those two things down or maybe three, cause I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm running the business, right? I'll write the three things down. And if I can accomplish those things, I'll even come back at eight o'clock at night and make sure that I've gotten those things done, mm -hmm. you know, because I just don't want to feel like I haven't completed what I need to complete. So I think that's, that's great, David. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is I just turn my ringer off on my phone and I check it maybe every hour or two because it would be so distracting. And for email, um, I just, you know, it's not open. It's, I don't even look at it really. And then what I do use, because we talk to vendors and such a lot, is uh, during that time is when I'll be responding to emails. Because when you're talking to those guys, most of it's <laughs> on hold or they're just talking to you about stuff that's not even relevant. You talk to vendors? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, you made a good point, though, earlier. So you don't necessarily even have to close your inbox. I, I like the idea that you mentioned where, hey, maybe you're on your scheduled time to check your email, but then you put it on work offline. So you can kind of put a stop place in and hey, I'm gonna work on it from this point on. And then you can minimize it out or 
you know, turn it back online for a second. So all your emails or replies and everything go out and then move on with your day. That's a great idea. My email. My favorite thing is, and that actually same guy that Brandon was talking about told me, uh, told me about the offline or work offline um, using an outlook. That's one of the best, one of the best things I think that I've, and you, do, and you don't know, and you realize it after the fact that what you would have reacted to in real time had that stuff come in because that's just right. how we how we function you put that in that mode you you got you, you know a half hour will go by where you're so much more productive mm -hmm. without oh, yeah. and that's just email so that's you know what that that I'm things take done. That one away today and I'll tell you why I'm going to take that one away today uh for me I a lot of the things I might have to look for are in my email so if I close my email that doesn't work right. you know Right. So you put it on offline. I never right. thought about that. You know, that's fantastic. Thanks I for that. Stuff that you need to work on, you can open up and, and get it, get to right. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you can send emails also, too. They just, mm -hmm. you know, just sent right away. Yep. You know? One little side effect positive from working offline in Outlook is that if you type an email and then you hit send and then you go, <laughs> oh, no, it, it didn't go anywhere. It's still there. <laughs> It's in your outbox. That never happens, right? That never right. happens. Yeah. <laughs> so you can go in and, uh, you know, fix your mistake before you actually send it. All right. I think there's one other that. little hack here that you can okay. do with that. Because if you keep your inbox clean like that and you're u utilizing some of these functions, the other thing to think about, I think, to take it one step further is reverse the sort order. Most people are looking at the latest one first and you're working your way from the latest to oldest. But then that means people are either waiting longer to get a response, and you're kind of just you're working. Ta you know. No, I just went back to nineteen. Right? I just went back to nineteen eighty two now. Uh -oh. <laughs> Wait, I didn't think we didn't this think you ever left it. Thing, <laughs> we don't think you ever left it. Quite honestly, Brian. You know? <laughs> All right, offline. Uh, we were talking about you know our, our our things, and and honestly, Brandon is well prepared for today. So Brandon, go for it. Well, I, I mean, I've already pinged on, on a couple of them or, yeah. or added on, but um, I, I love reading stuff from Jack Daly. I feel like he's awesome. Uh, so for those who aren't familiar with him, he's a, he's a sales coach. He's ran uh, as a salesperson and sales teams. Um, he's got a, a crazy cool life. So I, I recommend anybody read his books or, or even check. He's got like a a morning blog or something that he sends out. But one saying that he always mentions is if you don't have an assistant, you are one. And it goes back to valuing your time and spending your time the most wisely. Uh, you know, I think David, you mentioned in terms of blocking some of your time or focusing your time on the most important things. And you can't get your most important things done when you're also doing all of those really, you know, I'll call them admin or you know menial tasks that really you could offload to anybody else and you'll never be able to scale your business or yourself you know out of the day to day and and be able to really focus on your like that's what you hear you go to any event hey you got to work more on your business not in your business and you're not going to be able to get out of your business unless you stop doing all of the day to day operations not that you, you aren't going to do that some but you'll never be able to truly scale or, or really work on those operational efficiencies if if you're not out of some of that work. So I, I think that's a great saying. I always, you know, try to think about that when I'm doing stuff that I feel like, you know, really, should I be doing this or can I hire somebody to do well, that? That kind of leans towards, uh, or, you know, a delegation, right? That, that's another, you know, make, make sure that you, you, you can. It's something, if it's something that you can delegate, uh, and you're not, then again, you're, you're back to square one where you are. And as no, entrepreneurs, you know we don't like to delegate, right? Oh, we, yeah. <laughs> we, it's a trust thing. It's a, you know what? That's a hack. Trust people. You know, the old, the old song from, from Frozen, let it go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, to, and to know that, you know, it's never going to be done as good as you necessarily, or you might not think, you know, it's going to be as good as you, but once you can let it go, I mean, they're going to get, if you, if you get the right people, they're going to get 80%, you know, of the way there. And just or train yourself to a better job. Delegating, it's not going to be done your way, but it, it's it's like any any t task we, we undertake as, as business owners, as individuals, as people, learning to do something new. You're not going to be great at it the first time. So you need to accept the change, but give it three months to to work and fix. And, and then from there, you know, you'll, you'll reap the benefits of it for sure. 
Yeah. You know, I, um, I've always said since I started my business years ago, I'm always looking, I'm always working to replace myself. Okay. Completely replace myself. And what that really means is the responsibilities that I carry. And so, um, at the same time though, there's that trust factor. It's big for us, for business owners. It's tremendous. And what I have, what I, what I try to instill in my team and my managers push back on me, tell me to stay in my lane. Okay. And if I push back on you, we need to have a conversation, you know, because sometimes I need to override. Most of the time I need to just stay out of it. You know, we had a situation yesterday with, uh, with a potential clock customer and, and I felt really good. It happened. Well, uh, funny to say it happened while I was out running uh, of all things, right. In the evening. And, um, and, and fortunately for me, I was running or I would have probably stuck my nose in it. You know what I mean? Instead, tell me what I need to know when I need to know it. Boom. That's it. I'm out of it. If I don't need to know anything, I don't need to know anything. And so that, that might be a hack as well to tell, to tell your staff, tell you to stay in your lane as necessary and trust that they're, they're going to do their job. I actually, I really, I really like that. One of my, uh, responses that I tell all of our guys is Brandon not needed BNN, you know, <laughs> leave me for last. Like you guys need to go through the process because the more you have to be intertwined in it, the more, you know, if you're that central cog, it just delays everything. Right. And it overwhelms you because you can't focus on what you need to focus on. No. And the reality is nobody can do everything. So you've got to have all these people and they're going to add value because as I'm out visiting with customers, a lot of times I'm like, these guys are doing a great job because the customers are telling me that. Yeah. You know, um, and, and, and Ryan, I want to let you get to yours, but I want to say this. We all have this mentality that we have to go out and hire full time people. Man, there are a lot of people that are just looking for a flexible job, whether they're in high school or college or a stay at home mom or a retiree that would just love to do one thing. You know, just one, just give them one thing. I'll get 10 hours a, a, a week out of something like that. There's, it, it, you don't have to have full time, full time FTEs, you know, uh, on your staff. Hire somebody I'll, like I'll, you who's just looking to work. I've actually hired two of those people, right? Our marketing manager, she started off as a part time uh, while her daughter was finishing kindergarten or, you know, she just wanted to, to work part time. Uh, and that was four years ago. And she's been full time salary for probably three years. And then our um, our telemarketer right now is the same way. He was a full time salesperson uh, for many, like maybe ten years, and he just kind of got burnt out. He he wants to go a different direction, and so he's going to school. And while he's going to school, he wanted to do something part time. Uh, so he's he's doing telemarketing for us, which is you know well below his capability. Right? He's capable of much more because he's done it. But I mean, I've got this amazing sales guy doing telemarketing who needs a little direction because he's already familiar with how to do it. So yeah. What's your, what's your hack there, Ryan? I think we got like uh, what two minutes left. All you buddy. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, a very, uh, a very smart mentor that all of us know uh, told us uh, years ago, this orange cone time. So it's, it's literally an orange traffic cone. Uh, put that sucker outside of your door at your office. And, and, you know, I'm working from home for the last year, but um, when we were all in the office, it was very, very helpful. Uh, close the door, put the cone in front of the uh, office. And, you know, idea is leave me alone for an hour and a half at a time. Uh, other people, again, smart folks that we know have said, you know, we can work for uh, an hour and a half on one, to on one topic or one subject without starting to wander, right, before our mind starts to just get bored with it. So, and another part that that kind of goes into is if you can't do that, if you can't close the door and be offline for an hour and a half, then back to some of the other things that we talked about, which is you need to have other people delegated to do those things that um, you think you can't be, you know, you can't close the walls and the doors and turn off the phone for an hour and a half, right? If you can't turn off the phone for an hour and a half and be, you know, by yourself to work, then you got to figure out the delegation thing. So. Yeah. You know, a, a twist on that, uh, that orange cone. Uh, you can pick them up at the uh, the, the, the aftermarket or, or, or we, we have a place called Play It Again Sports here in my town oh, yeah. where, you know, you can trade in your sports gear and people come and buy it. So get the cones, soccer cones, you know what I mean? Hang over. How about the full size like road yeah. cone? 
at Lowe's for like 15 bucks. No, yeah. no, you, you drive around the streets, you'll see somebody at a construction site. <laughs> oh, they they're, they're free. That's a great hack. That's a great hack. Right? <laughs> awesome Straight from Thank New you. York. Thank <laughs> you. Just lay out there, you know, and they're cool. <laughs> well, listen, guys, I, you know, I think that this was well overdue. People, you know, we're being asked to do more and, and get it done faster. Isn't it always better, faster, cheaper, you know? And so um, this kind of hack is essential for business owners today. Um, you guys are fantastic. Always are fantastic. I can't wait to our next show. We don't even have a topic for our next show. So we got to meet and talk about that. Uh, but remember, the reboot is on every other Tuesday. I'm sorry, every other Wednesday at 1.30 Eastern time. Um, and uh, we've got the, the, the YouTube channel as well as you'll, you can find, uh, find us on uh, LinkedIn. You can just search ha hashtag the reboot. Uh, guys, anything else left that left to add? No, I think we did pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot for listening and watching, everyone. And uh, we'll see you the week after next. Take care. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.